Hi everybody, it's me, Rival Gaz. How are we going? AKA Real Gaz. So, for this PhD update, what I want to do is just talk through my whiteboard. So, rather than talking about what's been going on with the PhD and everything, considering how I haven't heard back about my confirmation yet, which, you know, is probably more of just a sign of how the university does things than me. So it's still on the line, you know, we might not actually be doing this PhD in gaming at all, but maybe we will. We'll just see what happens. You know, it's not my decision, it's the university's decision. So rather than just talk about that and all the negative stuff, let's just try to talk about something else and try to turn it into like positive while we're uh, not idle because I've been doing a lot of stuff uh, this week and I'll talk you through that stuff now. I'll just tell you real quick. So I've been looking at a lot of stuff to do with neurodiversity and just how different minds work and I feel like that's a really encouraging thing to do not only to better understand uh, myself and other people who I interact with, but also because in gaming, neurodiverse people, I've seemingly encountered many of them who are like pretty fantastical at games. So it's really cool for me to get a better understanding and appreciation of uh, those kinds of people, you know? Um, yeah, not much more to say about it, but I've learned a ton, particularly about autism. Right, so going back to my whiteboard, uh, the reason why I want to talk to you guys about it is because for me, this whiteboard has had so many achievements that have been completed and wiped off the board, but kind of what's happened on this side of the board is that there's just a whole lot of stuff that kind of happened, kind of didn't. And I remember maybe a couple of weeks back saying, you know, this whiteboard, everything that's on here kind of didn't really happen, you know? And I was like, I want to put all my good ideas somewhere else. So that way those ideas actually like come to fruition, you know? And I was like, hey, that's kind of pretty interesting way of um, doing it or thinking about it, you know? And for whatever reason, I've just hung on to this side of the board without wiping it all off now in an attempt to go ahead and just wipe it all off i was like maybe i should just talk through all these ideas hence this phd update about it right so let's move from left to right top to bottom i'm not going to talk about the pictures you guys can like daydream about the pictures like all the all our real fans and stuff most of you guys should know the story behind all of them but if you don't like i'll tell you another day Anyway, so let's start with this orange piece of text down the bottom, right? I have really no idea what I was trying to write there. And that kind of just tells you the importance of like writing really clear notes on your whiteboard rather than getting into a frenzy or just like blowing off some steam by using the whiteboard as a form of like stimming, you know, like you actually got to get your ideas out there so you can kind of use them. Moving up, we've got in purple there, international peacekeeping. So there was a journal article that we wanted to write for international peacekeeping. However, uh, what we ended up doing was there was a review. So a review got written about a book instead, and that was really awesome. Uh, fantastic work by a Japanese professor, a uh, really great book. So reviewing that was really, really great. Uh, above that, we had this idea for the British Journal of uh, Politics and International Relations that a special edition coming out. And my idea was basically we would do like a bit of a textual analysis of all their articles to kind of come up with uh, sentiment and see exactly based on what was being said across many years and on decades of British international relations research, like what are the kind of biggest standouts based on raw data and what was being written. Now, I had like the sort of tools and stuff to do that, but because it is like an optional side quest, it just didn't happen, you know? So Lady Gaz is a tenured academic. She's got to go hard on her existing projects and I'm always just 
being a cheerleader, helping out. Because we share the same discipline. I'm just venturing off into games, trying to reinvent myself, do something different, right? So, yeah, let's move on. That didn't happen, but it was a really great idea. And we can apply those methodologies to all sorts of different fields in the digital humanities and international sociology fields, pardon me. Uh, Above that, I got written in purple, fake rich. So this was a really interesting, that idea I had for a stream where it's like rival gas should be a rich kid. And how how could we do this? You know, pull it off because I'm clearly not rich, but like, how could we do this? And I had this idea of like uh, having a great stack of fake cash with some real cash in there. So I would always be getting some cash and uh, just mucking around and continuing on with this idea that rival gas doesn't really need to participate in ordinary human activities. So maybe we could do a fake rich stream or something like that, or just get real rich, one or the other. Uh, above that in blue, we have something about esports culture, right? So this one's pretty interesting. Just give me one second. Just needed to get my thoughts in order about it. So there was a professor, the Dean of Graduate Studies, who was my reference to get into the research training program to do my PhD at Charles Darwin. So they used to be like the boss, but then they moved on to the University of Wollongong. And now they do a lot of work in humility studies in psychology, right? Positive psychology, looking at humility and things like this. And it's so fascinating. They actually really inspired me to come up with this idea on the Australian esports culture because we have this whole Aussie sportsman identity that we have, an ethos that we have in this country, but it doesn't really apply to video games. And I was like, some positive psychology could be a good way to kind of connect traditional sports psychology and the whole sociology and culture side of it to this more modern form that has basically a lot of the cultural aspects coming from overseas and from video game companies. So perhaps working with a psychologist focusing on humility might be able to give us some good insights into how we can get a good esports culture going in this country. Right, moving above everything there, we've got in red, fixed identities. This one was a pretty interesting one. So let me talk you through that one. What it was, was just trying to make sure that when I play the character rival Gaz, how I feel and my emotions are kind of being actually accurately matched to what rival Gaz is supposed to be doing on the camera, right? So a lot of the times rival gas and myself like i'm just being myself and it's coming out as rival gas and it's like on point but sometimes in my life i'm experiencing something and i'm not actually playing rival gas to the full extent that i really should be you know so i was like i really gotta like fix these identities up and make sure that real gas and rival gas maintain this sort of separation on going further with the red markers we have returning to the blue parts i've got this bit about the stream so i had a sort of show method that i wanted to follow that i never instituted in season two or three and i just kept doing what i was doing in season two and three because the all all that grief and all that trauma i get about getting promised stuff and then not getting it and everything so you know the stream was supposed to be fully funded and everything and it just all collapsed you know because of the deceit and uh or whatever actually happens you know what i mean we can't keep propagating such a negative narrative because it just hurts we just got to move on so the stream didn't come out the way that i wanted to but basically i'm inspired by that 90s anime you know cartoon network previously what's happening in a recap below that i wanted to have different lectures about different topics as part of my stream and again Because the university hasn't been very, like, welcoming of me anymore, I haven't been able to really get out and be my best self as an academic here, you know. So I'm still cooking up a way to make sure that I can be who I really want to be in this space, Uh, not only in my own terms, but in a... and with people who kind of support me to be my best. If we just keep moving down, in the middle we've got a circle with those two lines coming through i actually drew that circle to try to show lady gaz about how her uh 
at the graduations at university, she's part of the Guard of Honor and she sits in the, I guess, on the stage and stuff with the rest of the academics because she coordinates and convenes a, a degree, right? So her students graduate. And I was just trying to show how she has a special hat and it's not sitting like level. So I had to like draw it in like these circles and stuff. And we were all just kind of laughing about our like spatial awareness, I suppose. There's some lines in blue uh, directly underneath that. I really have no idea uh, what, what that's about. Let me just have a quick think on the spot. Hmm. Squinting really hard at it. I actually think it is about how I was meant to be creating assets and artifacts in Canva and then bringing them over into different file formats and stuff so that way I could share them where appropriate. Underneath that, we have this thing about subjective, objective, and a citation. I cannot really remember what it is that I would be like perseverating on when I was looking at that, other than to perhaps, I have no idea, you know. I, I must have just been trying to separate experiences and realities in order to, for, for some purpose in gaming, you know. Because I'm, I'm all about, well, I've kind of just been identifying how people can have this kind of um, separation between, you know, not like Hui Zinga and uh, Magic Circle, but, you know, when people get in the game, they get in the game. Okay, directly underneath that, we've got, uh, in purple, Miranda Research, uh, Australian Army Review. So we had this article that we wrote about humanitarian assistance and interoperability with the Australian Army and Defence Force and the US Marines as they're based in Darwin. And this city and where they operate is disaster prone. And sooner or later, these two military forces are going to have to cooperate, but it hasn't really been well fleshed out. You know, so we were trying to get ahead of the curve there so that way we could avoid any problems. That work is ongoing. Returning to the top, of the board, I've got there written in red CDU. So this is all kind of like just PhD stuff. Yeah, so uh, underneath where it says the letter CDU in red, I've got written in black. Uh, let me squint, what did I say there? It definitely says something about using gaming to raise awareness for something, but I just really couldn't tell you what. Maybe using gaming as a way to raise awareness for high performance in computer, human computer interaction. I have written in blue there, law and world building. This is just really important about defining the stream and the seasons and helping me kind of get a better overview about the content that I'm trying to create. On the right, we have A1, A2, A3, A4, and 5 and it says Canva, the stream, Instagram, YouTube, and physical. These were all ideas that I had for types of artifacts that I could be presenting for my PhD to help us kind of see and understand what elite gaming uh, could be. And then underneath that, I have in purple, in orange, and in blue, this little graph that I made. Basically, it's like a high capacity graph. And it's about playing and work and mastery and I was trying to plot like a learning curve and an enjoyment curve and trying to kind of chart out or hypothesize that people would be at certain stages in their kind of development in their gaming ability and whether they're enjoying themselves or making money with it or being elite or whatever, you know. But I was fascinated in this learning curve and the, the idea of how we we learn the game and if we're enjoying the process or not enjoying the process and how everyone learns differently and how it all connects to, you know, attaining that competency. Next to that, I have RPG and a campaign, like all like kind of outlined. In season three, we were supposed to make a RPG Dungeons and Dragons campaign and that was like pretty special. We got all the basics down to run it. It was just a bit tricky to play it all asynchronously and to be honest like our very small community were very easy to please so we did like a little demo and it was fun and i kind of feel like that's all we needed to do but it would be amazing to continue to develop 
the stream RPG that we play with our viewers. And I am reminded that I think something similar is coming out on Discord as a little mini game that you can play with your community. So that was cool. All right, moving further ahead, or further down, I should say, we have in purple, it says COC, and it says explainer, example, and then start, and then next to it we have ethics and a tick, a line, and a cross. That was kind of just my way of being able to say, like, i got to do these kind of broader steps as part of the COC, and that's all complete now. But with the ethics, it's kind of like, that was when I was trying to distinguish what activities are my activities and what activities are separate to my teaching and research and research training program responsibilities at Charles Darwin University. It's also, that way I could get ethics. Okay, below that we have in blue uh, air conditioners and to get like serviced and stuff. Lady Gaz has got to take care of her makeup brushes. If we move back up to the top, I've got a red line and I have next to that in orange circled imbue feeling this is really important because as i was saying before about getting the identities right it's like in the stream when you're creating this content you have this opportunity to impart a feeling and emotion uh, for people and people kind of gobble that up in the content space right so i was like i just got to be cognizant about what i'm actually uh, putting out there you know then below that i have something in black uh put stream on blu-ray that was another artifact idea that i had because i've got like so many gigabytes of data not as much as destiny obviously uh then i have tolerance in international relations going back to a, a thesis that i had in my undergraduate days when i was at the anu so that's the australian national university and the program and the school that i was kind of in was a global top 10 program so that's why I'm so super duper at doing what I do, uh, studying with the world experts and stuff. That was amazing. Below that, I have passports because we got to get some passport stuff sorted out. Also, like I have the letters T, S underlined. So you guys, if you know, you know. If you don't know, uh, you don't know. Below that, I have in red uh, how I got into my PhD. I really want to just do another video where I can tell the story about how I got into my PhD, but it's more of a hero's journey kind of story rather than just like this whole Suki Lala story because like nothing cool has really happened. Uh, it's just kind of just been lame. Okay. Uh, then we have more Lady Gaz stuff, you know, like coat hangers and oolong tea and an ironing board and getting a blow dry and getting a washing machine and all sorts of white goods and you know what they're like. They can just have whatever they want. Does that say Swarovski? I'm not too sure. Right. Then if I just go back up to the top, there's only like three or four things to talk through. So let's smash that out. So I've got pop culture, peace and justice, cybersecurity, gaming, PhD, life and news. Those were all kind of like uh, areas or themes that I wanted to have in my theme and in my, in my stream, sorry, and in my PhD themes. In black, I've got like movie night and Dungeons and Dragons and lab coats, all like ideas that I had for viewer rewards. And I still have those. Like I, we've got the money for the lab coats. We just haven't sent them out. And like my viewers are great because, you know, the fans are so awesome, but they just love hanging out and having a good time. They love the thought of having being able to have something posted to them, but they don't really want to have the stuff. You know what I mean? Like they just, they just, it's just cool that it's possible, but they're like, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Then I've got, it says S2 page, S1 page. These were all ideas that I had for rivalgas.com, being able to better articulate like the state and the journey uh, of the stream overall. Because as you guys know, I do like seasonal streams. I've got my yellow art line eraser there. So I guess I can go hard on it. And I suppose I would like, I don't need to talk through all the pictures, but like, I do like looking at all those pictures they're the things that kind of inspire me and keep me happy. And so that's kind of just what's on my whiteboard. And I'm really looking forward to getting the confirmation of candidature, like approved or whatever, hopefully. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I'll be like trying to find a different university to partner up with and to do a PhD. Um, but if it does work, then we'll just keep going along and we'll keep trying to make it better and better and better, right? And that's all within my control. Yeah, so that's the whiteboard.
not a lot of PhD news to report. Again, I've just been looking at neurodiversity and how different brains work and things like this, just looking at the latest and greatest science coming out of like Stanford and I think the University of Pittsburgh as well. There's a lot of stuff on the internet where it's kind of aimed at children and some aimed at adults and some continuities. I'm really fortunate because like I've binged so much Huberman and I've binged a lot of stuff on the internet that like I can see connections that other people might not be able to see. Um in that space and it's all just to be able to bring out the best in all gamers not just your kind of stereotype esports champion you know what i mean which is kind of like a bit of a misnomer anyway because it's all so new and so highly diverse but yeah this is my phd update for this week guys and i hope you've all been doing really well if you've got a whiteboard tell me what's on it and like clean it up I've got another side to this whiteboard too. I haven't even, I don't even want to flip the board and see what's on that side.